I'm ready. I've been looking forward to this trip. I'm excited. It's my second attempt at going to Niagara. The first time got aborted. Ended up in Massachusetts instead. But today, the focus will be all about West Virginia and how beautiful a place it actually is. I'm going to call this the official start of this ride. We're in downtown Princeton, West Virginia. Going up through West Virginia, we're going to go to New River Gorge National Park. Uh, we're probably going to camp in there somewhere tonight because I plan on goofing around there some today. All right, so step one, Pipe Stem State Park. So I'm headed out to the Canyon Rim Center. I know they have a tramway. We really don't. I'm not going to do all that today. It's not terrifying at all. Huh? Not terrifying at all. <laughs> the cool thing is, if it does break, you don't think about it long. Yes. Just mild terror for a few seconds. Having survived the gondola, we now make a hasty retreat. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's a very cool place. Something you don't see every day. <laughs> I had my foot dangling off the peg, caught it on the pavement corner and it turned. Just about to yank my ass off the pipe. It's a cool little place to go visit, something you don't get to see every day. It's pretty unique. Uh, I'll show you the video in a second. almost positive that my stupid GPS routed me through here one time in a Corvette. So we're taking a chance here. This road looks like it dead ends. But there's an awful lot of traffic going this way for a road that completely dead ends. It's only about 10 minutes out of our way to either find out it does or it dead ends. So there you go. I will advise. There is a sheer cliff to my left. You can see that straight up and down for many, many feet. And there also is pretty much a sheer cliff to my right that goes down to the river. So, it's pretty cool. There's I-64 going directly over our head. The so worst comes to worst, we just shoot up the bank, right? <laughs> Holy crap, it looks like somebody actually has done that. <laughs> That's a little trail going up there. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only person that's come back in here that wasn't supposed to, if I'm not supposed to. So they can't bury all the bodies. It does say no outlet though, that's a little concerning. Yeah, that's it. That is the end of the road, because that is no longer a road. This is not the road that I was thinking about, because I would have never went up that in a Corvette. Or down that in a Corvette. I would have backed all the way back out if I had to. It turns out it's a dead end. <laughs> cracks me up sometimes how you get out here in the middle of nowhere I don't know if you can see it but the you know major interstate huge bridge right there and you know 99.9% .9 of people that go over that have no idea that this close there is a tiny dirt road in the side of this cliff I just look at that I mean that is it's got to be 60 feet worth of cliff there I'm all over the place trying to look at this to get it on video but it's wild whoa good god that dirt <laughs> good god that gravel is thick in the middle right there that's cool that was worth the trip out here even if it was a dead end all right so it turns out i was right this is the dang way i went i knew it was we just missed the turn off that is the road i'm looking for this is way more familiar so yeah, this goes out to 64. I have snatched victory from the jaws of defeat yet again. Now you're on a state road that is incredibly reminiscent of most forest roads, which I just think is awesome. There needs to be more roads like this. Everybody's always in a hurry to get somewhere. Oh, it's got to be paved and this and that. Leave us some of these roads. Stop messing them up. And Tad's back there going, where the fuck are we? What is going on right now? <laughs> Dad has never been a speed demon. I definitely did not get my love of riding a bit too quickly from him. <laughs> I 
Fully loaded, 1200 Tiger, hauling ass up a dirt road. What could go wrong? <laughs> a lot could go wrong. Good for today. We haven't really covered a lot of distance today, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, tomorrow we're going to be on the interstate. There's really not much there. There's basically no green on the map between uh, New River State Park and Columbus, Ohio, which is the direction that we're going. So it's mostly just going to be get on the interstate or four lane or whatever and just dig all day. So it's nice to have this day to get out and do what I truly love. Don't get me wrong, I love motorcycle riding. But I love motorcycle riding because of this. I love this. But yeah, my GPS one time routed me down this road in a Corvette. <laughs> I was, by the time I realized that what, what was going on, we were deep into it, and it was just like, well, shit. So we bounced it down through there. Come out the other side, and that's when I found that Sandstone State Park that is uh, definitely worth your time. I see other motorcycle tracks here. Lots of them. At least two or three sets. I mean, there's car tracks here too, but there's motorcycle tracks in the middle and where you would expect to see motorcycle tracks. And we're now we're on this little paved road, which is not much better than the dirt road, honestly, but it is what it is. This should pop us out somewhere around I-64, and then we'll use that to uh, go up to uh, the big bridge, the big, whatever it is, expansion bridge? Suspension. It's not suspension, I know that, it's an expansion bridge or something like that. Whatever, it's one of the biggest something bridges. Swinging bridge, that's it. No, I'm just kidding. I remember what it is. We'll find out when we get there. This is the way these things work. I don't know if you guys have caught on to this or not. What happens is you're on a big road, then you get on a little smaller road, then you get on a really small road, then you get on a dirt road, and if you keep going long enough, you end up on a dirt path. And it works just the opposite. You keep going on the dirt path, you eventually find a dirt road that leads to a little tiny paved road that leads to a road like this. And then before you know it, you're on a great big road again. See this road? Look at this. It's like a little roller coaster. Gotta love it. Jesus! <laughs> the front wheel was off the ground. I ain't kidding y'all. That was only going about 50 miles an hour. That's awesome. I'm down very fast now. Lord. Oh, scrubbing the pegs here. Like that when they designed this road, they were like, what's the fastest way we could go down? Straight. I'm like, well we can't go straight, but we can we can almost go straight. No idea what road I'm on. But this road is impressive. I don't know if we're going the right way or not, but I would pick to go this way every single time. This is just smooth, flowy little mountain road. I mean, just look at this road, y'all. Gives me a little chubby. New River Gorge National Park and Preserve. So we are officially in the park now. We're heading to one of the campgrounds. I can't remember which one it was. I sort of just picked one at random. West Virginia, world capital of kiss your ass curves. And riding beside the cliffs. <laughs> Dad's gonna be super excited. <laughs> I can hear him now. As we went up that other dirt road, he's like, I don't mind it. I don't like riding on that dirt. It's a lot of work. I was like, well, it's really not if you just relax and just go. He's like, that's what you say, but that's not how it is. So I'm sure he's not loving this either, because this is a lot rougher than the other road we're on. It's the way we gotta go. Huh? It's just the way we gotta go. Yep. Yeah. It's a shortcut. <laughs> I really didn't realize that it was this rough, or I probably would have picked a different one. If I get up here and I find out this really was just a shortcut, I'm gonna be irritated. <laughs> so I'd rather win another mile or two on the pavement. Is this what they meant when they said adventure bike? Yeah. 
shit, mud puddles. I hate mud puddles. Good news is, all these mud puddles have been solid. You know, they got gravel in the bottom of them, so they're not muddy. So they're not actually mud puddles, they're just water puddles. Water puddles don't really concern me that much. Mud puddles on the street tires, however, can put your ass on the ground before you even realize that you're about to hit the ground. I'm just gonna keep recording because I feel like something's gonna happen here. One of the two of us is gonna end up dropped. Yeah, if I'd have realized this, I would not have gone to this campground, but we've commit to it now, so might as well just keep on trucking. I wonder if he's thought about food yet. I mean, I have food for us. You know, it's the, like backpacker food boil the water and put it in it. So I have food. <laughs> but he hasn't asked anything about it. So I wonder if he realizes that we actually do have food. Or he's like back there thinking right now. He's like, shit, we have no food. <laughs> we're going to have to ride all the way back out just to get something to eat. Then we're going to have to come back. Oh, that may just be the bridge. But I got marked as a moy point. This may not actually be says I'm 0.7 miles away, but it may actually be further than that. So we're going on over the, all over these mud puddles. I will give you guys my opinion on how to do it. Um, I mean, these mud puddles are not bad, and I'm being able to dodge a lot of them. But when you come up on one you can't avoid, a lot of people want to try to go to the edge of it, the corner of it, you know, and try to hit just the very side of it or whatever. It's usually a bad idea because most mud puddles, if you think about it, they're sloped down. So if they are slick and muddy, and you try to ride right on the edge of it, that puts you right on the slickest part where it's the steepest angle. So a lot of times, if I have to hit a mud puddle, I don't have a choice, I'm aiming for the middle of it. You know, unless I think it's really deep or something. But I'm aiming for the middle of it because it's gonna have the least amount of surprises there. Like this one, I can avoid this one altogether just by getting over like that. But if I hadn't had a choice, I would have picked either the right or the left lane and just went right down the middle of it. It's like this one I can't avoid. There's no reason to be concerned about this puddle, I don't think. But I'm not going to try to avoid it. I'm not going to try to scooch over to the edge because if you go over to the edge where it's slick and muddy, then you slide, you know, your front tire slides out from under it and you fall over. And then that's embarrassing and you have to pick the bike up. I don't know if this thing knows where the hell we are or not. This does not look right. This is a point two mil tenths of a mile away. I'm not supposed to be able to walk down to the river. There's a half mile straight up and down between me and the river. That's doing really good though, I'm proud of him. I hope to God I can be half as active when I get his age doing the, the vast majority of this road it has a name I'll flash it up on the screen here I don't remember but uh, we passed another uh, bike <laughs> which is pretty cool so I'm guessing this is uh, people know about this road anyway but it has you know pretty cool but it looks like it goes on for a couple more miles the only reason this is bothering me is I wouldn't normally do this to dad he doesn't really like this kind of thing he likes pavement you know, I like being off. If I was on the scrambler right now, I'd be happy as hell. I'd be like, bah, 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 flying up through here. You know. You know what's going to happen here? I'm going to come back here with the uh, cargo camper 2.0 and the scrambler or the 350, one of the two, and I'm going to have a fantastic weekend of hell raising. I'm gonna have a fantastic weekend of exploring all over the place up here because there are roads going off of this one. Who knew standing up on your bike would improve the ride quality? Guess <laughs> we're gonna take a left on Thayer Post Office Road. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I may have found the world's most rural post office. <laughs> P.O. Box 1 road is definitely going to getting better now i like that oh yeah this is this is great this is awesome this is perfect oh my god there's a house <laughs> he's gonna kill me <laughs> he's gonna kill me <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> shit. 
<laughs> yep, yeah, I'm a dead man. If there is a better way into here, he will kill me. Yeah, this definitely ended up being worth the ride. It's a beautiful campground. It's a fair campground if you look for it in New River Gorge. I guess that'll work. Okay, so we're leaving the campsite here. After the debacle, not really a debacle, less than optimal road in last night. We're hoping it's not as bad today to get out. <laughs> Basically, we have a choice between two roads after a mile or two of this. One of them looks like a complete nightmare for Dad. Hey, it looks like a place I want to come back and ride to me. I worked his ass pretty hard yesterday, so I'm going to try and cut him some slack today. This was a Thayer campground, T-H-A-Y-E-R, Thayer campground in New River Gorge National Park. It's a fantastic place. We had the campsite all to ourselves. We got us a little fire going, made us a little food, had a little spicy beverage. It reminds me of that little church in The Walking Dead. That was supposed to be The Walking Dead theme, but yeah. Days like this, I won't be in any more trouble. And the moral to this story is to always be prepared. The moral to this story is clean the surface you want to put the sticker on. Oh, it's not going to work. <laughs> it's too dirty. <laughs> Try one more time. Oh, yeah. There we go. You ready? I'm gonna tell y'all a secret here in a second. Dad don't know. I'm not gonna tell him. Picking leaves out of his turn signals. It turns out when I was putting the uh, directions in to get here, it kept telling me to go this way. Like it was taking me around and then back. And I thought, well, that's stupid. Why would I do that? And that's why I put that waypoint in that confused me last night. Because I thought we were there and it turned out another five miles to go. That was the only way I could make it go the way I wanted to go was when I put that waypoint in. So the GPS knew that that road was shit. <laughs> and I overrode it. So the lesson here is to always never trust your GPS because it does not want you to have any fun at all. So if it tries to tell you not to go away, you do what you have to do to make it let you go that way stupid GPS. Now we're on this beautiful piece of road. There's a train track over to the right and then there's the new river on to the right of that. Starting to look a lot like civilization. I believe we may be about to leave the forest. Which is sad. We just got a text message so yeah we're definitely back in civilization now. There's another sign. Road work at another mile. But it's been 40 miles an hour because of road work for the last five, but nobody's working. So we are going over the New River Gorge Bridge right now, the largest arch, well, Western Hemisphere's largest arch bridge. Uh, we're gonna get a better look at this thing where you can actually see something. But we're going across right now, but I think it's a fun fact to realize that before they built this bridge, to get from that side of the gorge to this side of the gorge, took an average of three hours. Three hours to go what is less than a half a mile. And we're doing it in the same amount of time that it takes me to tell you that it took three hours to do it. So that's how big a deal this bridge was to this area. Just to give you kind of an example of what you used to have to do, this is the road that you used to have to traverse to go through the gorge. And can you imagine any kind, go on dude, any kind of real traffic trying to make it through this road? Thinking of an impressive thing, it's right up there. I'm not going to stop here because I happen to know that there is a better viewing area from the bottom. You can see the whole thing. But that is a pretty cool view right there. This is stupid. You're going 11 miles an hour. There's the bridge again. You see it back there? 
fancy schmancy. They have actually walked underneath that bridge. You can buy a ticket and they take you out and they do a tour where you get to walk on the maintenance, uh, maintenance things underneath it. So it says we're about a quarter of a mile away from the Tunney Hunsacker Bridge, which is the other bridge to get across the river. So the original bridge to get across the river. It's wooden. And the other bridge. So we're gonna walk down there. So we're here where everybody puts uh, boats in now. So we're gonna stop here. done right but the world is blessing me right now with an amazing little stretch of road. Hmm. All right I want to tell this story while I got it fresh in my mind. I just had pretty epic things happen. Pretty shitty luck. So I'm going down the road suddenly all of a sudden the motorcycle gets all wobbly feeling. I was like oh crap I got a car going low. So I picked the next exit, you know, and I noticed it's getting worse and worse. And I pull into the first gas station, I say, oh look, they have a tire pump thing. That's fantastic. And I pull in there, of course, that tire pump doesn't work. By this time, the tire's already flat. So I have to ride it on the flat over to the next gas station. They do have a tire pump thing that works. But I can't get any air to stay in the tire. So I'm like, shit, I really got a problem here. So, you know, we start looking at the tire, looking at the tire, looking at the tire. Finally figure out it does have a cut in it. Uh, you know, this is not something I can fix right here. About this time, really nice guy pulls in, you know, and he's helping us out a little bit, you know, seeing if he can help out any. Uh, a guy named Ernest, really nice guy that we met here in Ripley, West Virginia. Uh, it turns out that he had the tool to take the wheel off of uh, the Tiger here, which is a single-sided swing arm, so all we really needed was a 15 millimeter socket. It's one of the really cool features about a Tiger. So we get the wheel off and start calling around different tire places, you know. Of course, most tire places won't even look at motorcycle tires, uh, so I called one, no luck there. Called the next one, uh, her name was Jill, Jill Swan, Swan Tires, I think, in Ripley, West Virginia. Uh, she said that it wasn't really something she could do, but she knew somebody that might be able to help me. So she gave me a number to a guy named Jeff that owns a restaurant locally. I'm like, hey man, traveling through the area, you know, Jill from the Swan Place told me that you might be able to help. He's like, yeah, we can probably help you out. Uh, you know, he's like, I don't have any new tires, but we might be able to find a used one, or if we have to, we might be able to patch that one. You know, meet me, meet me at this place, we'll see what we can do. I'm like, okay, cool. So, you know, I've got the, got the wheel off the truck, so uh, the guy that helped me get the wheel off gives me a ride down to, to where I'm meeting this guy. And he opens the garage door and, you know, he has pretty much a whole uh, motorcycle mechanic shop in there. I'm like, wow. <laughs> you know, some really nice bikes in there. I'm not going to go into details about that. But, uh, well, maybe I'll just show you this one. All right, that's pretty cool. It's a uh, North Commando. Fiberglass tank on that. I never realized that about those. But, uh, but anyway, so we dig him through his, uh, you know, used motorcycle tires. He had the exact size tire that I need on a tire that's got enough tread lock in it that uh, I'm not too concerned about finding a new tire. I probably will try to find a new tire the next day or two somewhere. But I really don't have to stress about it. I could probably put, eh, I could probably put a thousand miles on this tire if I had to. Hopefully, this all happened over like an hour and a half at most from start to finish. I could not have got a tire replaced this fast if I'd set up an appointment at a dealership to done it. So, yeah, I just want to say a shout out to everybody, all the guys and the girls that uh, that helped me out today when I had this flat tire. Um, that was awesome, but that's why motorcycling is so great, because you got friends everywhere, whether you know it or not. He owns a restaurant in Ripley, West Virginia. I'm going to put a link to it and the name of it and a picture of it right here because I want you guys to get through riding through there. I want you to stop and eat there and say, Moto Tales told you to come here. And then when he looks at you and he goes, I don't know Moto Tales, be like, yes, you do because you helped him replace the tire on his Tiger the other day. Fantastic day. I could not have gotten more lucky today. Cut the tire, guarantee I did that yesterday on the Forest Road and went flat, had it replaced back on the bike, and move it again within an hour and a half. That's pretty awesome. 